Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my programming in Python tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about strings. If you didn't see the other tutorials, go check those out, because you probably don't know what idle is, and idle is what we use to create Python programs. I'm going to start this off. String examples. This is a comment up here. And to create a string variable type, I want to give it that name. And then just put it in quotes. And then if you want to print it out, and you'll see the output over here, well, this is a sample string. Now what I'm going to do is show you the format option that's available with the print function, because some people had some questions about that. I'm just creating, this is an integer, which I talked about in previous tutorial. And then I'm going to create another string variable, and I'm going to call it cats. I'm going to pull up the print function. I have these little curly brackets here allow me to insert variables, put the quotes and then the dot. Format. I'm going to type in num1, comma, word1. Make sure you close that off. Hit F5. I have two cats. And you can see they automatically go in based off of their order. And here I'm going to show you how to combine two strings. We're going to call it combine str is equal to I have blank plus sign. Now we're going to need to convert this variable name num1 into a string with this string function right here. The reason why is it is an integer. If you try to send an integer, you're going to get an error which is bad. Now, if I print that, you can see I have two cats printed again. And it printed here the first time and here the second time. So that's how you would be able to combine strings in two different ways. You could also append information. So let's say Combined string, let's say I wanted to put the value I think at the end of this string. This is how I would do it. Plus equals to equals comma space I think. And then if we print combine string, you can see I think showed up right over here. I'm going to create a string called string variable two. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of different functions that are available. Now I'm going to show you the for statement. What we're doing here is it is going to cycle through all of the letters that are in the string value that you see up here. And this is, this is called the iterator often, but I prefer the cycler because I think it makes more sense um, in other languages or other people might think it sounds worse. But either way, iterator or cycler, that's definitely not a... That's a made up term that I created because I think it makes more sense. People understand it. What it basically will do is it'll jump through here. And the, this basically what this says is for as long as there are letters in this string, I want to, to individually place the letter in the value of I as you cycle through all the letters in the variable that's named string var2. That's basically what that says. And what this is going to do is print them out on the screen. And you can say just another string. Now let's say you just wanted to print the first character in this string. It'd be real simple. Remember, you want to, because of white space rules in Python, you want to go down a line. You don't want the indentation. What we're going to do here is print. And let's say I want to do a new line. That's what this symbol does. Backslash n means that a new line is issued. And we're going to type in the that off. And we're going to put a bracket here, a square bracket, and zero. The index of the first letter of the string, of every string, is zero. Then goes one, two, three, four, five, and onwards, and onwards, and onwards, and onwards. We have five. Doink. You can see it printed all the strings, and then it created a new line right here. And then it printed out the first letter in the string is J. And if I went and changed this to one, 
you're going to see you show up. And that's exactly what you see there on your screen. Now, you see how all of these letters are printed on individual lines. Let's say we wanted to be able to print them out all on the same line, exactly how they go in there. Well, whenever you create a for loop, it automatically creates a new line as it cycles through. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to override that new line and instead tell it to just simply put nothing there. So I'm going to put print and then put I, comma, end is equal to, and this basically says after you print this, I want you to do put this right here, which is nothing. You can see it's just printed out just another string, not like it did right here. So moving on to other things you can do with strings. Let's create string three is equal to, just like I was able with the backslash before, what I'm going to do here is actually create a multi-line string. Yeah, throw the new line character in there again. As long as I use those triple quotes, this guy right here will be, I'll be able to make this as long as humanly possible. If I print this out, you can see over here, this is a multi-line string. Now, if I didn't want this to skip to the next line, I would just put a backslash in here and it prints everything out on one line. You could also, let's say if you wanted to print a quote inside of these quotes, well, it would get confused if you had quote let me just show you. If you tried to print this, this would give you a syntax error because it wouldn't know where the string ended. So if you want to correct for that, again, you put a backslash in there and then another backslash, and it won't pay any attention to that. And again, we could also use single quotes as well to alleviate that issue altogether. And there is also backslash characters for single quotes. Let's create string four. Just ramble on <laughs> and I'll print this out. This is some really long strings here. Boy, that's really bad English. <laughs> this is what happens whenever you do something completely on the fly. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to search for individual words inside of a string. Just do that here with the find function. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me the index for the word really, where it appears. And if you count over, the letter R will be the third indexed character inside of this string. Now, if I wanted to grab that text and print it out to the screen, I would just simply go print string four, bracket, 13 being the first character in really, 19 actually being this space right here, this dead space, because you always have to go one ahead to grab everything. And if I save and print, you can see it prints out the word really right there on the screen. Now let's say that I want to replace all of the letter E's with the letter A inside of this string. So that's how I do it with the replace function that's built into every string variable in Python. Now, I have to print this out. And you can see here, it replaced all the letter E's with the letter A's, so everything is spelled incorrectly. There are tons of functions. I'm just going over some of the more useful ones, like for example, I'm going to create a string here that has too much white space. And this is very usable, especially whenever later on I'm going to teach you how to automate a website. You're going to be doing things like this all of the time. So I got all this additional white space. And if I print it, all the white space shows. So let's say I want to get rid of all that additional white space. You might think, well, that would be really, really hard, but it's not. Just type in strip and all that white space is gone. Uh, let's say we want to split up all of the words in the string. And again, this is something else that you would do all the time. Just to save time here, I'm just going to 
eliminate the strip part right here and instead type in split. See, automatically goes and splits every single word into this little guy here. And you're actually going to be able to see just for the heck of it, what value this is now, because it's no longer a string. It is what is called a list, and that's what we're gonna cover in the next tutorial. Now that you split all these different values apart, what I'm gonna do now is show you how to rejoin them. So I'm just gonna copy that line of code just to speed things up here a little bit. And I have to define what, how I want, uh, basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna get rid of this quote here and all of this space here. And it's wondering, at least Python wants to know, what do you want me to put there? So what I'm gonna tell it is I want you to put a single space there. And then I'm going to use the join function to join all of these previously broken up items that are stored in a list. And of course, I'm gonna tell it which variable to use. And if I jump out here, just copy that. Boom, they're all joined right back together again. And like I said, you're gonna be doing this a lot. If you wanna know the length of this string, just type in L-E-N. Boom, 34 characters. And if you wanna skip, like remember before when we were using the backspace character, well, there's something called raw text and how you create a raw string inside of Python is to proceed any string declaration with a lowercase letter r, and we're gonna actually be using this in examples, so if you don't quite get this, don't worry about it. And then we'll print this out. I don't want to. See, previously that would've caused a new line, but because I put that little r there, it automatically escaped from that. And that is a heck of a lot of the different things you can do with strings in Python. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. In the next tutorial, I will cover all of the different lists that are available in Python. Till next time.